Hey guys, thanks for joining us today. I'm so pumped you're with us today because I've got an amazing friend and leader on my team. Her name is Jenny Poulos and she's awesome all the way around. You're always like keeping us organized around here. And we're gonna be talking about how we master verbal skills. And here's the cool thing. I mean, before we went live, <laughs> Jenny's like, okay, how, what are we gonna be talking about? I, we started with a framework and I'm like, there's 125 things I wanna cover. This could literally take three to four hours. And she sent me back the Bitmoji like, ha ah, very funny. Like, let's not do that. <laughs> so here's what we just decided on the fly. So you guys are listening to this right now. And here's what I want you to know. We are going to create an entire series. Today, we're gonna to cover like the key things. There's eight of them that we've learned 25 years of research that you need to do to master verbal skills and develops. We're gonna tell you what they are and how to use them. And then we want you to go to work on them. And then we're gonna tackle one of the boulders. And I'll show you what the boulder is here in a second. So um, so thank you guys for joining. I really appreciate yeah, so it. Jenny, excited. anything you wanna say before we get going? No, I am super excited about uh, being on here with you today. Language and verbal skills and how we communicate with each other and our patients is one of my favorite things to talk about. And I'm really looking forward to creating this series. I think it's exciting for us and everyone in the ACT community. So I hope that you enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. And we love this stuff. So this is all we do. So if you're joining us for the first time, you're like, what the heck is this? We are dental practice coaches. So we work with dental practices all over the country. A lot of them are dental practice owners and they're focused on like private care. How do I create a great private care practice, take really good care of my team? And so if you're struggling, don't struggle. Dentistry is hard enough, like running a dental practice by yourself and leadership is lonely. Raise your hand. We're here to help you. And in the meantime, we're going to bury you with value and give you some great stuff. So let's hit it. So, Jenny, you know, mastering verbal skills, like I shared at the, you know, at the beginning of this, it, it let's talk about mastery. It doesn't just happen like in one effort. You got to work on this a lot. And so we're going to create a whole series like I already shared with you. Now, if you're listening or if you're watching, you can go to actdental.com forward slash verbal v-e-r-b-a-l and you can get the whole series now you're going to get the series that we've completed up to this point so as we shoot these and all the resources we'll put them back there so you guys can have them so it's actdental.com forward slash verbal you'll get this particular um training session then you get the others as we create them but today in this particular episode what we're going to do is we're going to go through the eight concepts now these concepts you got to use them as a team to you to master verbal skills and then we're going to use the concepts and tackle one of the biggest challenges that most offices have which is do you take my insurance do you guys get that question i bet you do no one gets that question what like nobody gets that question everybody gets oh, that question that. yeah it's so i don't care day. yeah i don't care if you're fee for service completely you're getting this question eight to 10 to you know, times a day out of, out of 10 calls or whatever. And so you'll get this question. Now in the future series, you're gonna see this. You're gonna see questions like this. You know, if this is not covered by insurance, well, yeah, I don't want it. You get that one? We're gonna cover that one. Can you find out what my insurance company will pay before I decide to do this? You get that one. We're gonna cover that one too. You know, I have to go to an in-network in, in dentist. Why aren't you in-network? You get that one too? So the point is this, all these tough questions, why won't you accept my insurance plan? We're gonna tackle every single question you guys get. So if you get more than what we're covering, send them to us. We're gonna cover them and send them back to you because we want you guys to create a great practice and a great life. You know, and another one you guys get, you get this one, I want your crowns. People call you, they don't even say hi. They go, hey, hey, hey how much are your crowns? You're like, can I have your name first? <laughs> so. You know, 
Do you do dental implants in your office? Wait, 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 wait. We should get to know each other before you ask questions like that. I'm sure you get those questions. You know, is this going to be expensive? Well, that's a good question. You get, and the point is all of this. Your team's got to be equipped. And in all fairness to dental team members, let's just say this. Dental team members, you're out there, if you're listening to this podcast, you're not equipped with these things like this is all we do so we spend time you know i speak all over the country jenny and our coaches train team members and dentists how to deal with all this stuff but dentists hire you if you're a team member watching this or listening to this you're you, team, you get hired by your dentist and your dentist goes hey welcome i'm so glad you're here i'm so glad you're here um this is what your dentist i'm so glad you're here welcome go and you go what go where and you go go up the dentist goes go up front you know, yeah. so you know how to do this, right? You know, you know what to say. Yeah, you know what to say. You got it. It's yeah. fine. Don't worry. And let me remind yeah. you, like great companies that have great thinking, great core values, and they're crushing it in today's world. Like a company like Chick Fil A, they have their team members who are 18 years old, 19 year olds. They have to watch 40, and I did say 40, four zero videos, and pass tests to serve chicken nuggets. So I think we got to think better. We need. We have great people that work in our offices, in your office. We got to equip them better with the right skills because they can create a great practice if you give them the right tools. So some Absolutely. of the other questions, yeah. And then you know this, answering, you know, responding differently to different behaving patients. What do you do when a patient's call to cancel or reschedule? You can't say that's okay. But at the same token, they're not treated like B patients or even C patients. And we're gonna cover all that in a future series. What do you do when patients show up late? Do you say no problem? I hope not. We're gonna give you the best practices of what to say from the best dental offices all over the country. Again, verbal skills matter. Comprehensive treatment, why didn't anyone? You ever have a patient come into your office and go, hey, why didn't anybody, else? I've been going to another dentist for 25 years. Why do I come to your office and you put all this fancy equipment in my mouth and take all these photos, now you gotta tell me, now you're telling me I got all these problems. I've never heard this. Why didn't anyone tell me about this problem before? We're gonna equip you with great answers. You know, and then dentists always ask, well, how do I train my admin team to, you know, use the most effective verbiage when calls come in? We're gonna help you with that. So our goal is just to equip you with great things, great thinking, great verbal skills. You know, how much is my insurance gonna pay? And when explaining fees, should I break them down or should I just tell them in bulk? You know, uh, will, my insurer, will my insurance cover my x-rays today? So. I'm sharing all this with you because this is what we hear all day long from all of our practices. And our job is to equip the team members and the dentists and the not just people at the front. Everybody's got to be working together because verbal skills matter, you know, and the are do you take my insurance and are you in network? Those are not the same questions. You need to know those are two separate questions. And we're going to show you the difference between the two of them and what to say and how to say them. And we're also going to share with you in another series, eight outgoing phone calls. You know, everybody talks about the phone calls coming in, but you've got to be making eight outgoing phone calls to keep that schedule full and vibrant. We're going to take you through all eight of them and you can see how to use them in a regular basis. So you can set up a system every single week and crush it. So again, to get all the series, go to actdental.com forward slash verbal. That's actdental.com forward slash verbal. So let's get into it. Jenny, there's eight key concepts. Now, a disclaimer, you came up with most of these. So like, I got a couple of them, but you know, there's eight key concepts that you need to master and nobody masters it one at a time. The first one is this, you gotta understand the formula for conflict. We teach this, I use it in every single presentation that I've ever made is E minus R equals C. It's the international formula for conflict. It's probably the most important thing I'll ever share with you because whenever you're getting challenges with people, I want you to think about this. If you're driving right now, pull over and write this down. E minus R equals C, expectations minus reality equals conflict. You can build a whole business. You can have a great family. You can create great harmony everywhere you go because if you can manage both the E and the R, you're gonna have little or no conflict. And the more clear you are about your communication, the more we as a dental office can avoid conflict from unclear expectations. You agree, Jenny? This is the most important formula. And I, every team that I work with, I share this with them. It's the most important formula for ACT, for us. It's part of our language. We say, hey, that's an E minus R moment. Mm -hmm. And if we can eliminate or reduce these E minus R moments, when the way we communicate, we set up an expectation and what 
our team members or our patients experience. When those things are in alignment, we build value, we close cases, we have happy team members, we have happy patients, but when they miss, poof, conflict, Amen. right? So, and this, if you can just take this from today and run with it and master this, you're winning. Totally agree. Always be growing. That's the core value here at ACT and you guys need to embrace that. And this is gonna help you grow. And if you could just nail this one, man, yeah. you're winning. Your life will be that much better. So that's principle yeah. number one. Principle number two, if you're gonna master verbal skills in a dental practice, you have to understand this. Language truly matters. When you know this, when you go to any office, you're like, wow, they're really good at what they do. Their, their language is purposeful. They have intent behind their words. They know what they're doing. And Jenny, you taught me this one, language matters. What does this mean? Yeah, I mean, I think we take our words for granted all too often. Mm -hmm. And we have a limited amount of time with our patients. And we want to have everyone on the team clearly and confidently communicating the same message to our patients. Right. And little shifts in verbiage can have big impact. You know, talking to people about making a cancellation versus a change in the schedule or saying, I'm, I'm confirming your appointment. You know, if I'm calling to confirm, my patient might think, cool, it's not confirmed yet. Right. Versus calling to remind you, I'm reminding you of something that's already confirmed, right? Small shift, but can have big impact. So we really want to think about word choice and think about how we can make our days more predictable and easier for choosing the right language. Totally agree, totally agree. So language really matters. And that is principle number two. Now, another thing is it matters, but it also creates great value. So huge value. So Jenny, um, you know, tell us about how it creates huge value. So how does that work? Well, we kind of, I had touched on that just a little bit, but consistency of messaging is really big for how, how we layer and build value. Mm -hmm. um, we have to remember that people say yes to um, they say yes to the things that they value. Yep. People pay for the things that they value. Um, so if we aren't believing in ourselves and communicating confidently to our patients, then they're gonna be maybe a little bit hesitant. Or if what the hygienist communicates to their patient is not in alignment with what the admin team member communicates with the patient, gosh, what sort of message is that giving your patient? Yeah. So we want to we want to always be in alignment that helps us build value for our patients. Totally, totally. So language builds value. Let me go back here. And so, um, hold on one second. Huge value. <laughs> Huge value. And I'm not it does right. Yeah, right. So. Hold on one second. You guys are going to have to edit that piece out. I got these all set up and now it's jumping. On, it's moving on me. Like, damn it. Hold on one second. Okay. That's a pretty I, picture. I know. So I need to, one second. 20, 1225. I'll ask them to edit this out. Oh, I'm so mad. Just give me two seconds because I can fix it all. What is going on? Hmm. Good thing we we got a champion editor. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> ah, shit. Okay, I'm just gonna go back to the old way I know how to do this. Run scene, replace that, and that is gonna be Jenny. I gotta go back 
to this. Hmm. Okay, now this one should be that should be right. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so, okay, so can you see that real quick? Yep. And then that's you, then that's yep. me. Yep. All right, so I'm only going to go back and forth from these three. Okay, so number three, you know, language builds value. You guys can edit that in and edit out. So number four, principle number four, key number four is the question is the answer. If there's one thing I could teach team members or anybody or my kids is, the question is the answer. Don't try to get good at answers. Try to get really good at questions and why people are asking questions. You're going to find you can. there's so much more fruit in a relationship. You learn more. Um, you're going to create more intimacy. You're going to create more understanding. So it's pretty key. And it's amazing. You know, wouldn't you agree, Jane? Like people just don't ask questions anymore. They're just listening no. to, to, to talk in some respect. Yeah. Well, and, and the type of questions that we ask are super important. Um, I really, you know, questions help us build relationships. They help us get to know people. Uh, and a concept that a lot of people are kind of surprised when they first hear is that the person that's asking the questions is really the person that's in control of the conversation. Yeah. So you, you know, you want to be driving the conversation. You want to be controlling the conversation, get really good at asking questions. And I want you to focus specifically on getting really good at asking the right types of questions. So asking open ended questions. Love I don't it. want you to keep asking questions that I can give you a yes or no answer to. Yeah, I want you to be asking questions that encourage conversation that encourage me to learn a little bit more about your desires, your wants, your fears, your expectations. Because this is, again, this is how we build value, how we build relationships, how we get patients to say yes to treatment and to say to their neighbor, oh my gosh, I I love my dentist. I love my, I love my dental team. You have to go see them. Yeah. And I was going to say this, like, so if you're listening, I hope you heard what she said. Now, you might be listening as a dentist going, I totally get it. Like, I get it. We're going to show you how to use it when it comes to the difficult question of, do you take my insurance? So the question is the answer. And it's important, you know, and patients, sometimes patients just don't know what to ask. So they're asking a question that they've kind of or not been or maybe been trained to ask. And so... When you directly answer the question, you're giving the wrong answer in a lot of respects. You know, you're being literal about the question. Don't think like that. Instead, try to look at the question behind the question. A lot of salespeople teach this, like there's a question behind the question. You know this with your kids, with your spouse. It's not really the question that they're asking. What they're really asking sometimes or a lot of times is, are you going to take care of me and can I trust you? Because they don't even know what to ask. Let people know that they are more important to you than the fees or the question or, or the challenge in that respect. So that's pretty key. And then number five, Jenny, you pointed to this, but you gotta yeah. be focused on being a better listener. Now this goes with the question thing. It's one thing to ask questions, but you gotta listen to the answers that come back from your questions. So we can teach people to ask questions, but like, did you hear what she just said, the patient? And they're like, oh yeah, she did say that. I'm like, oh Lord. like. It, You've got to be genuinely curious right. to know what someone's going to say. And you, you like mentioned this so often and how most people actually listen is I'm listening for my response. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to know what I'm going to say. Right. I'm not actually listening to hear you. So I want you to begin listening to understand, not listening to respond. Totally agree. Totally agree. So that's principle number five. And then when you look at principle number six, 
Listen, well, I mean, you already said this, but they're kind of yeah. combined. You got to hear what they say. So number one is ask questions. Number two is listen to what they say. Number three, which is actually number six here, is you got to understand, you know, you got to listen to understand. You're listening not to respond. You're listening because you want to understand what they're saying. And let me give you a little example because I put it into a little verbiage thing. So when somebody says something, go say, okay, so go back to that. When you say you don't... Um, you don't like your brown crooked front tooth, or when you say, I, I think this is gonna be way too, you know, that's very interesting to me. I care about all of our patients. Just, would you share with me a little bit more about that or what that means to you so that I can better understand and help you best, the best way I know how? Tell so, me more of, about anything is a great question to ask. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, it's an awesome question. You should be armed with that. Well, not armed, but like equipped with that question every day. Like, tell me more. Like, so a little bit more about that. Like, or what else? You know, what else? Like, you're yeah. you're, you're wanting to like get get them to open up and share a little bit more. And when I share more, a lot of times the best question askers we see in dentistry, and you've already seen it if you've learned how to do this, people give you too much information. You're like, I didn't need to know that. But they're starting to feel a little bit more trust you know with you and so that's a key piece to this is you want to really understand what they're trying to say and number well, seven we're trying to build safety and that's how we do it right as yeah. human beings we're constantly scanning our environment every three seconds actually our brain is scanning the environment to see if we're safe so this is how we're building safety for patients is yeah. by asking these questions saying tell me more and listening and leaning in and really like wanting to hear what they say yeah. it's best it's the best skill you can master totally agree it's one of the I, if there were three or four life skills it would be listening you know and really listening to understand it's, it'll just improve the quality of your life and everybody else it serves so mm -hmm. in a big piece of this we're alluding we're going to say this over and over again nobody ever masters verbal skills in one shot I'm like yeah i took a course i got it i'm good you know no you're gonna look you're gonna learn principles. Like today, you're listening. You're gonna learn principles. And then you never get there. You're just learning more about people and who they are and why they do what they do to be to better connect with them. Uh, as in, there was, you know, we're bringing back our administrative and chair side and hygiene courses. And when we had them in the previous version, 1.0, there was an office that came and it was the sixth time they had been through our, ad, our admin course. I'm like, you guys have been here six times. Like, what are, why are you here the sixth time? And the woman <laughs> at the front, she said this, it was brilliant. She goes, cause we're gonna be the best in the world at verbal skills. And you know what? I love it. They are. They never subscribe to, we got it, nailed it, crushed it. Next thing, you know what I mean? It's a oh, lifetime process. Oh yeah, we're always improving and always learning. It's uh, when I, I'm kind of working on a, a new technique called mirroring right now um, that we can d dive into in the series further, but like I go practice it like at parties, right? <laughs> so it's like, so I gotta wait, get go back to that. What is mirroring? I don't like mirroring, mirroring like behavior, conversation, mood, uh, it, tempo. It's language, right, with language. So um, mirroring, right? So it's, it's giving back someone the language that they've given to you. Okay. So, right. So I, by, by mirroring someone's language, by, by mirroring, mirroring, excuse me, their questions, um, I get them talking more. Right. So it's, it's, it's fascinating. It's it is. And it makes people, people will just talk, 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 talk. I almost say nothing. I kind of just like repeat the last thing that they said in the way that they said it with a little bit of an inflection. And then they talk, 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 talk. And I think they, they're like, wow, you're such a great conversationalist. And I've said four words that they said to me anyways. Yeah. Uh, but I, like, it's a new skill that I'm trying to learn so I can help teach it to my team. So always be growing. Like we are always growing and we're always going to be sharing with you the new new knowledge that we get. Yeah, absolutely. Two tips on that. Number one, like, I get it if you're a team member listening and you're trying to handle the front desk. There's a lot to think about, a lot to consider. But if you practice what Jenny just shared, 
which is, you know, I'm going to take the last thing they said or the last few things, and I'm just going to learn a little bit more about why they said that you're going to be 50% better. The other thing I would say about verbal skills, which we didn't say in the intro, is this. A lot of people want to move away from PPOs. They just do. They can see the write-offs. It's a crusher. It kills them. And they're like, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, you don't write a letter to a major insurance company to get off of insurance. It's a behavioral journey. If anyone's ever done it, they'll tell you, like, we had to learn. We had to learn how to communicate. You as a team have to be the best communicator on the planet in order to practice, survive, and thrive in a fee-for-service environment because you're going to get the most difficult questions ever. And you need Mm -hmm. to know why they were asked and why why are you different as an office and why would I come here and reach into my pocket and pay when I could have somebody else accept my insurance elsewhere, you know? And you, you've got to learn to not be defensive about things also, totally. especially in this these insurance question environments, right? I mean, we have to um, we have to honor where people are coming from. Yeah. Um, and that's part of the listening, right? And um, oftentimes just by asking a good question and listening to someone, we can diffuse these difficult situations just by listening. Amen. Um, I mean, it, that that happens oftentimes. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be working with a number of practices right now that are transitioning away from some of their heavy PPO status. Um, and the, what we spend most of our time on is language and how are we gonna talk to our patients and how are we gonna be confident in how we communicate with our patients. People think it's just like you said, maybe, you know, we write a letter, we make a change, we crunch the numbers, but but the the practice, the intentional practice in what we say and how we communicate to our patients about these shifts, that's the heavy lifting. That's yeah. the real heavy lifting. Amen, sister, it is, it is. And one other piece of heavy lifting that you have to learn about in mastering communication is, you know, communication, when it, when it comes your window to talk or say something, Remember, or communicate a concept, like an appointment time or a fee, it always falls on the shoulder of the sender. You know, a lot of people think, oh, communication is two ways. You know, I told her, but she didn't hear that part. No, no, no. When you can accept the responsibility that I have to over-communicate and make this crystal clear, that's, again, a game changer. So as you can look at these principles from top to bottom, Number one, all the way through eight, you know, the more that you layer these on, the better you're going to become. And then anything bad that happens in communication, remember, it always goes back to you. You were the communicator. What did you do wrong or how could you say it better or how could you communicate it better so that it was received the way you were trying to send it? I make the biggest mistakes in the world. I say something and it was received differently. You know, or Mm -hmm. I I use the excuse all the time. I told her, I told her I was, you know, and she didn't hear it or they didn't get it. And I have to remind myself, it's not them. It's me. The, you know, there's other layers that we could actually do a whole podcast on this one. But like, you got to remember, talking is the worst form of communication ever. People don't listen to what's being said. If you can somehow get this information to go through people's eyes, research shows it's four times more likely to be retained than information that goes in the ears. So um, make sure you're equipped with all of these principles and work on them over and over. It's kind of like yoga. It's a practice. You never get it there. It's practice. You're you don't right. ever get there. It's no. true. And I love how these are all layered, right? I, I think I said this to you the other day, it, it like in regards to this, this last concept about um, whose responsibility it is. Uh, before you point the finger, turn the thumb. Yeah. Right. So we're so quick to say they didn't get it, but really, you know, OK, why didn't they get it? I, I want you to to reflect on how could I have done better? And with this one, right, these all layer and mix together, learning to ask questions to ensure that someone did hear correctly is also an amazing skill and and a really important thing to master. If you're not certain if someone heard or understood the way that you you believed you were communicating something, let's go ahead and ask. Let's ask them. What a novel concept, right? Hey, I want to make sure that you that you understood, you know, what I was saying. Let me know what you heard. Absolutely. I love what you're saying. 
Yeah, I totally agree. And it's okay. You know, what we find as coaches is that most offices could do better if they just slowed down. Everybody's in a hurry, like to get yep, so much done. Smooth, smooth is fast. It totally is. Totally mm -hmm. is. So let's, you know, we're going to remind you of those eight principles, key concepts for mastery, but let's get into it on one. Let's now, you know, our hope is, is if you're listening to this or you're watching it, and accidentally you are on the webinar formats, I, you know, that you're using these concepts. You know, I want you to use them. And so we're gonna dive into the biggest challenges that you have. And before we get into the actual challenge itself, I want you to understand this. Obstacles are opportunities in disguise. They just are. Obstacles are not obstacles. I actually like it when somebody says, you'll never do that. My first thought is, thank you for saying that. That's just the motivation I needed <laughs> to get through this, you know, like, Obstacles are opportunities to grow, to get better. And so we, we do this in our verbal skills challenges training that we do with team members all the time is, you gotta remember like anytime somebody gives you a challenge, it's just a big boulder. And so here's what I want you to think. Somebody gives you a big boulder like, I can, you know, do you take my insurance or this is gonna be, just go, thank you so much for that boulder. I'm just gonna put it right here, right? We're gonna, I, I, it sounds like this is important to you, but I'm gonna put this right here. Can I have your name first? Because I always love to know who I'm talking to and I love getting to know my patients. What a great way to change the boulder into a helpful conversation. So don't get stuck and feel like you got to respond right away. Sometimes you just got to be slow down. You, you got to slow down and be equipped with the whole idea. Like even when they, somebody calls you, hey, how much is this? How much are your crowns? You don't say, oh, they're $500 and how many would you like? You never say that. You go, okay, that's a great question. Let me put it right here. Because if you just completely just communicate the amount, they're going to hang up on you in one second when those people have the potential to become great patients. Don't you agree, Jenny? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, it's about getting to know people, right? And I love, I love like the visualization, like, I'm just going to put this right here. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit more about you. Yeah. You know, one of the one of the things we have to remember is you take your your team, right? We take hundreds of new patient phone calls a day mm -hmm. or a, a, a month, a year. Uh, the person calling your office, they've made one or maybe two phone calls. Right. So they don't really they don't really know what to ask. They're they think they know what to ask, but you've got you've got to guide the conversation and slow it down and begin to build a relationship. Um, I'm super excited about this series because we can spend hours just talking about the new patient phone call and the yeah. way that you transition through that to begin building value and relationship from that first ring of the phone. So I, I totally agree. Excited. You know, and part of changing the way things work or getting a better result is first we have to change our brain. So if you're listening to this and you're an admin team member and you're like, listen, Kirk, you and Jenny don't understand my office. It's hard to work here. Here, I just, I want you to try this. Just put this in your brain. When somebody asks you a difficult question, go, oh, I love that question. I am so glad you asked the hardest question of all time in any dental office. And so let's, let's get there. Let's, you know, you know, take every obstacle and softly set it to the side for now, but here's one of them. And you get this question, I don't care who you are, what kind of office you have or where you practice. You know, you gotta, you gotta make it easy to get in your office. Now, I forgot, I had one other thing I was gonna throw in here, and this is how my brain works. I always throw a million other, you gotta make it easy to get in your office. Now, let me explain. It's not that you're gonna like let everybody in your office come in, you know, everybody calls, you don't want everybody, you don't wanna be everyone's dentist. But at the end of the day, when you're connecting with people and you're talking to them, you wanna say, hey, listen, you know what? It is really easy to do business. It is awesome when we see people in the world of dentistry and they're very successful and very easy to talk to or very easy to work with. There's nothing worse than seeing someone who's successful and it's so dogmatic and they're hard to deal with or it's hard to get in their practice. If you're listening to this, I hope you would agree with this. If we can get these people through the door, they're pretty much gonna stay because they're gonna see how special we are. They're gonna see why we're different. They're gonna see why they would have to reach into their pockets and pay for dentistry here because what we do, we don't fix teeth here. We change people's lives. So make sure that you make it easy to get in your dental office. And one of the questions you get periodically is, you have a great patient. 
it's Mrs. Finelli. And Mrs. Finelli says something, you know what? You guys are awesome. My husband, he needs to come in and see you, but he doesn't like dentists. You should say something like this. I love that. You know, I love that you even mention that. Now, when you say your husband really needs to come and see us, but he's reluctant to do so because he doesn't like dental offices. Now, go back to that. I want to understand this. We don't usually do this, but I am going to invite your husband. Like, tell me a little bit more about that. And then once she tells you a little bit more, understand what she's saying. And then you might say something like this. We're going to invite your husband to come in our office free of charge. Here's why. Because we believe so much in what we're doing for a screening examination. Now, this is a brief exam that, you know, it can be co it's conducted in my private office. So he, he doesn't have to actually sit in a dental chair. We can just take a look and give him a first impression. If he's bleeding, if he's got mobile teeth, if he's just terrified. We'll just talk to him. It doesn't have to be putting a face bow on him and putting him, you know, through, you know, a CAD cam or anything like that. We just want to get to know him. And remember, at the end of the day, dentistry is always done because of trust. They, they want to look in their eyes. You talk about the scanning your brain to make sure you're safe. That is absolutely true. And if he wants to schedule a complete dental examination with the x-rays for the customary fee, then we're so happy to do that. You want to make, take these barriers and just remove them as they come at you because your life will be better and your patient's lives will be better. Now, Jenny, let's get to the hardest one. This one's the hardest one. Do you take my insurance? Now, you get that question or do you not? You guys are just superior level. You just probably don't even oh, get this we, question well, anymore. Oh, we definitely get that question. Um, right? My my favorite way to respond to this and and it's true. It is a true statement. Um, we are, we, yes, we accept dental insurance. We are an insurance friendly practice mm. because by the sheer fact that we are going to submit a dental claim for you and we are going to assist you with narratives, x-rays, probe charts, all of the things that need to go out in order to maximize the benefits that your patient has paid for and wants to maximize makes us insurance friendly. Yeah. Doesn't See, mean that we are in network, but gosh, like, yes, we are insurance friendly and we're going to help you maximize those benefits. Uh, and then we can go into more detail. Let me explain how, how your benefits are going to work in our practice. Absolutely. Um, because yeah. you have to understand some of these patients are really good patients. You know, it's a popular question. And chances are patients are not 100% clear about how their plan works. They just don't. They don't even know what to ask, what questions. And so do you take my insurance is oftentimes what comes out. Instead of saying, you know, like, no, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, or confusing them with details about in-network and out-of-network. What I'm going to encourage you to do, if you heard Jenny, like, this is so great. You want to pause and then just ask a few more questions. And I love the phrase insurance friendly. And so we're going to give you a couple phrases that we teach our offices. And again, remember, we're dental practice coaches. So this is all we do. We're geeks about this stuff. I, I could talk for hours and hours. You guys would fall asleep, hopefully not while driving. But, you know, like it's insurance. Like it's, it's one of the most important things. Now, before we get into the actual details, I, a couple more things. I always have a couple more things. <laughs> while you might not participate directly, you have to be insurance friendly as an office, like Jenny said. The answer, if you heard her say this, it's yes for the most part. You don't go, no, we don't participate. We uh, we think your insurance is lousy, and so we don't participate with that incredibly. Now, but it's really cool coming to our office because we charge a lot. And what we'll ask you to do is write a check to us, and then you can send all of the paperwork to your lousy insurance company, and they might not give you anything. You know, patients don't want to hear that. You know. The other thing that we always teach, and we teach this in every single thing, scheduling, verbal skills, you know, uh, appointments, everything. You never tell people what you can't do. You only tell them what you can do. So do you take my insurance? First things first. Remember, it's all about relationships here. It's not about the insurance, whether we accept it. Are you in there? Like, slow it down. Tell your brain. Like, I love this question. I love this question. And a big part of our practice, because... We're insurance free or we're going that direction. And again, you don't have to be insurance free, but you got to get your brain around. Look, we're all about relationships. Slow down and start the conversation right. Never start with an answer. Instead, try to do this. Start with a question. 
and we'll equip you with a lot of great questions. But sometimes like the easiest question you can ask or is, you know, this one, like, hey, even if somebody says, you know, something, they, they mention something, you're like, I don't even know what the heck that is. Just say, I love that question. Thank you so much for asking it because you're talking to the right person. I don't even know what you're asking about, but I'm, I'm the person that you ask questions to because I'm the question asker or two person. Hey, can I ask you a question first? Try this on the phone. Just try it. And they'll go, yes, for sure. Can I have your name? Would you mind sharing me, sharing with me your name? I always love to get to know the people I'm talking to. Uh, you know that I have a chance to speak to. I love our patients. And so you want to slow it down. And when they offer up their name, use it. You know, Jenny said, use the last word in the sentence. And they go, my name is Lisa. Well, Lisa, gosh, it's so nice to meet you. Thank you so much for calling our office. I want to tell you one thing. I don't even know what you're talking about when you ask that question. But we are all about relationships here. Can you do me a favor? Can you share with me? How did you find us? How did you hear about us? And slow it down a little bit don't you think jenny like just slow it down oh, yeah if you don't hear anything we say ask their name it'll change the conversation people it go will completely shift the conversation that those two things you know can i ask your name and i and then my name's jenny it's great to meet you yeah. i can't wait to person i'm gonna set the expectation right away that i'm gonna shake your hand in person one day so glad, so glad to meet you. Can't wait to meet you in person. I want to so, come to your office already. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Now we're having who fun with you guys. The, yeah. Who can I thank for referring you to the there practice? You there you go. Now, yep. again, we'll say this to over communicate this so that because you're listening and you know, already know talking is one of the worst form of communications, but like <laughs> ask their name. Oh, and here's a novel concept. Use their name. So when they say my name's Lisa, use their name quite often because I, I have more a you know ADD things going. I got more squirrels running around me. But when somebody uses my name, Kirk, what you know, it refocuses my brain, yeah. and I actually think it's they called, know me. Yeah. It's called a reticular moment. It snaps us back right, right when we hear our name. Um, and uh, your name is the sweetest sound in the world to you. Hearing your name, like when someone says your name, your brain lights up. Yeah. Um, so use it and uh, use it often and then uh, like don't overuse it don't don't be creepy yeah. but use someone's name it, it's a it's a it's an important thing absolutely I love it. It down. like when i'm on the phone with someone um if i if i if i'm in my practice and i answer the phone it's a new patient phone call um i write their name down in big bold letters i have like a little dry erase right next to me and it's the first thing i do i write it down so i see it and i remember to use it yeah ding 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 ding. that's a tip because you've been in maybe i'm talking about me a lot but like you ask people their names you go hey what's your name and then you're like shoot i didn't even listen to what they said it's great to write it down so that you can refer to it because there's there's going to be probably a lot that comes at you now once you got the name thing down again it's not so much the name it's the whole idea to ask some questions. Now there's two critical items. We're gonna give you a couple more things to do. Just, and you guys go back and listen to this over and over again and just try one or two things. You're gonna say, wow, that changed the whole conversation. The patient actually scheduled and they found out we were different because they came in and the phone matters. The operatory matters. The moment matters. Two questions that most dental offices do not ask. You gotta ask these questions. So do what Jenny's saying, write the patient's name down, then equip yourself with, I think, are two critical items, two cri why us and why now? Why did you choose us? I mean, we are, there's a lot of choices here in this great town that we live. Why'd you pick us, you know? And they'll tell you, they'll say, my brother went to you or my sister or I heard about you guys and it's critical to know that. The other question that most offices don't ask is why now? You get the whole, well, who referred you? That's great. Why us is a better question, I think. And then why now? Like, okay, so you're coming to us now. Why? And they'll say to you, like, I have a tooth that's broken and it's the right, it's on the right and it's on the front. I think it's one of my front teeth. It's kind of broken up here. Why now? Well, when'd you break it? You know, and they go, well, I broke it four months ago. And you're like, well, you got to ask the question. Why now? Because they're going to say something that will blow your mind most often. They'll go, I'll tell you why now. 
because my 20th reunion is three weeks from now. That's pretty important to know. Or here's another one I've heard in Dell offices. Yeah, I just inherited a whole bunch of money. Do you think that would be important to know? Ask the questions. Like there's so much opportunity with questions. You know, so here's a, here's a great way to say it. You know, Lisa, thank you for calling. I'm so glad you called us. So why us? Why? What prompted you to call us today? And Jenny used one of my favorite words because this is a tool that you should equip yourself with all the time in dentistry. It's called curiosity. The most successful people in the world, they have a tool in their tool belt and they use it all the time. Your friends, some of you are gonna listen to this podcast today and then you're gonna have friends over to your cul-de-sac or your house. You're gonna open up some wine and they're gonna walk into your kitchen and you're gonna go, oh my gosh, my life is so much better because you're in it. And you're gonna go, it's so good to see you. And you give your friends a big hug and they're equipped with a tool on their tool belt and it's called curiosity. They go, how are you? I haven't seen you in a long time. So what is Zoe doing? Like, And you spend like 30 minutes telling them all this stuff about you that you would never tell another person. And you go, what a great person because they were naturally curious curiosity is so key in life and in a dental office don't you think oh being genuinely curious and and wanting to learn about someone I, you'll be amazed the things that you find out about people yeah. um and i love i mean this kind of like takes us back full circle all the way to e minus r right. when you ask right. these why us why now questions when you lean in with curiosity and want to actually listen to cure the answer you eliminate e minus r because you have a clear picture of why this patient has called you of why they're coming to your practice before they step foot in the door so you can meet their expectations because you know what they are Amen. Yeah, you don't know people's expectations unless you ask. Also, too, if you don't use the formula, unresolved conflict, if you're not using the formula, E minus R equals C, you're going to have conflict and unresolved conflict. Write this one down. Unresolved conflict always, and I do mean always, becomes a crisis eventually. We don't know when. You have unresolved perio. That becomes a crisis. Unresolved relationship issues. That becomes a crisis. Unresolved money issues between you and anyone else. That will become a crisis and you will no longer have a relationship with them. So E minus R equals C is a great formula to use almost in anything. And we're going to use a lot as you get involved with us or more series. It's just a great tool. We want to make sure you're using it. So curiosity is important. Now, here's another why. When you're using your curiosity on your tool belt as a friend, as a father, as a mother, as a sister, it's so cool because there's a lot of learning going on. We watch hygienists or even chair set assistants. They're curious. They got this little light switch on their brain and they flick it on all day long. They're curious about patients. They're curious about conditions. They're curious about life. There's learning going on. The second you're not curious, there's no learning. I am just waiting for you to talk. And all I hear is Charlie Brown's teacher. Wah, 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 And my brain actually went to, what am I going to have for lunch? I wonder what I'm going to do tonight. Wah, 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 wah. Make sure you're curious. When somebody says something, go, wow, barbecue? I don't even, well, I love barbecue, so I can't use that one. But it's like, a, um, I, I mean, I could play lacrosse. And I still don't know. I think it's a great sport, but like, I'm curious. I don't know how the rules work. And so I know a couple of friends of mine. They're great lacrosse fans. And I'm like, so why are the masks different for the boy? Like, I I want to know. And it's amazing because they'll tell you, here's what's really cool, you guys. People will tell you everything if you ask. They will, for the most part. Yes, it's true. It's all, you gotta, ask a all you got to do is ask. So mm -hmm. be equipped with curious. So do you take my insurance? Let's go back on path here. Okay. Now, again, remember the Boulder thing. So do you take my insurance? Even if you're fee for service, even if you only participate with one insurance and it's small, even if you participate with a lot of insurance, try this this week. Say this, your insurance, you know, that sounds very important. It's, here, let me take that Boulder. I'm gonna put it right here. And once I get your name, find out why you called us, why us, why now? Hey, Mrs. Jones, you asked me about XYZ insurance. Tell me a little bit more about why you asked that question, because I'm the person that can help you and I want to know more about that. It sounds like that's very important to you. And so 
I have that on a, you know, it, it's, it's just a constant staple. Like when somebody says something to you, remind yourself, have that, that moment in your brain, like they asked, it must be important to them. So, um, you know, and another question that you might ask after they share with you, yes, my insurance is very important to me. My husband works at the plant and I think we get, um, $1,200 or $1,100. You need to know that you need to know what they're thinking. And then another question, again, questions are the answers. So don't be equipped. That's why I would actually, Jenny, tell me if you would agree with this. Like my, my thinking is this, and we, you know, you're the expert coach. And what I didn't share with you in this episode is Jenny is not only a coach, but she runs an amazing practice with 19 or 20 team members out in Denver. So she not only teaches others to do it, she does it all day long. My thinking is this, is that I would much rather equip, you know, scripts have been given out to dental teams for years. And I'm not opposed to having something written down, but I want to start with great thinking first, great questions mm -hmm. first. So if you're a dentist and you're going to do a scratch start or buy a practice, throw away your scripts. Start with questions first, because if you can get yeah. your team members asking questions, you're off to a running start, don't you think? I Yes, scripting, um, it doesn't come off as authentic. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I want everyone to be is authentically themselves when they're communicating because then you're comfortable and you're more confident. Yeah. There are questions to learn. There are key phrases to learn. So, you know, there's scripting and that I'm going to say, you know, I want you to ask the question, tell me more. Right. I want you to embrace the phrase, we are insurance friendly but I want you to communicate in a way that's authentically you and ask questions because that's how we get good conversation going. And yeah. really it's about creating a conversation where I can learn about someone, I can build value, I can get trust growing up so that patient's like, wow, there's something different here. Yeah. It feels a little different, right? Yeah. I love that. And think about this. So I'm going to speak to the dentist who's listening right now. You're like, okay, great. Yeah, you guys are telling us. Yeah, great. Think about how you're blessing your team members when they can just be more authentic. Use the word authentic, Jenny. I love that because your team members don't want to be robots. They don't want to like, they're not fishing for dollars. You know, they're very cognizant of what makes your practice work. But think about it as a gift to your team members, like when they can just be themselves, they can be authentically curious with team, with patients that are calling. It allows them to be more human when they work. And so equip them with great questions. Here's another one. You know, after you've learned why they asked the question, well, help me understand how you've used this in the past. So Lisa, I have a question for you. Okay, just, just because I wanna know, would you mind sharing with me how you've used your insurance in the past? That is a great question. That will blow your mind. That one alone, people will go, yes, I will tell you exactly how I used it. I actually went to a dentist in the previous town that we lived in. They didn't accept it, but uh, we had to submit it. And you're like, oh, okay, works the same here. You know, so like um, sometimes we throw, we throw everybody out just because of what they're asking. But no, when you return it with a better question, you can peel the onion. I mean, that analogy has been used way too much, but it's true. You're going to learn so much more about how it all works. And then another thing to consider is this, is that, let me go back to one more thought is um, you want to make sure you're helpful. So, you know, I'd love to help you. Yes, I'd love to help you with your insurance, um, but I need to know a few more things. You know, would you mind telling me what you already know about your insurance? So one question is like, um, you know, tell me what you, how you've used it in the past, but how, you know, what do you know about your insurance? And again, they'll tell you stuff that'll blow your mind that you weren't even equipped for. So uh, make sure you do that. What are some other thoughts that you have, Jenny, as you look at like questions that you can ask when people start asking you the insurance question? Um. I mean, tell me, tell me more about that. Tell me how you, tell me how you've used insurance in the past. Um, I actually don't like the word insurance. I like the word benefits. It's, right. it's one that I, I think you should strike from your vocabulary. Um, your dental, you should be talking about the dental benefits that they have. Um, I, I, th I think asking, asking patients to, uh, 
let you know what what's your understanding of your dental benefits. Are you um, are you are you? Oof, I got stuck here. What? <laughs> I'll help you. You know. Not that out. I got no, it's okay. So we'll make an edit on that one in 54 <laughs> minutes. So the don't... Ben, when I when I shifted to benefits, then I totally like lost my train of thought. Don't worry about it. So yeah, like I I think it's well. You're pointing to the whole thing. Be intentional with your language. So like when people say insurance, you know get back to benefits, you know? Um, and we have hours of this stuff. You're gonna see where, if you keep listening, you show up for the series or show up as a coaching client, you know, you wanna make sure that you're, you're thinking the right way. I wanna redirect. Now, I have this as a thought. And so at some point, I'm gonna ask them a lot of questions. I don't necessarily wanna equip myself with the perfect answer, but there's gonna be a redirect. And the redirect is this. They're going to be asking a lot about the insurance. How is it going to be? And I, I get it. It's very important. We're going to honor the question. We're going to honor that we're going to learn more about that. But I'm going to redirect the question back to the why, back to the relationships, back to the treatment and the need for treatment, meaning addressing the concerns of the insurance importance and then moving forward for solutions. I want to know why they called. And then, you know, talk to him about a possible solution or why our office would be a great first step in helping you find a dental home. And I know you're going to love it once you get here. And the key, the reason I'm saying this in going to so many offices is the more you make insurance the issue, the more the patient makes the insurance the issue every single time. And conversely, the less you make the insurance the question, the less they make it the question. So um, I've watched offices do this all the time where they're like, oh my gosh, insurance, insurance, insurance. And if I wasn't a patient, you know, if I was a patient that didn't have any insurance, I'd be thinking, how do I get some insurance? So we want to make sure that we, we think like that. So take insurance, the word insurance, out of the question as much as possible and redirect it to the why. Remember, the why is easier than the how at this particular point. And Jetty, you, you mentioned this, yes, you know, the word yes. And so you can say something like this to the effect, you know, yes, we do work with insurance carriers or companies, and I'll be happy to share with you how our insurance works in your office, even if it doesn't work in your office at all. But before we get into discussing any of those policies, I'd like to get to know more about you so that I can better assist you and maybe some of the challenges that you have and why you'd want to work here. Um, so that's kind of where you want to go with all of these, you know, all these questions. And so um, I want to get back to this too. So we help, you know, we want to help you maximize your benefits. And we also want you to know, it depends on your involvement with the insurance. You might be heavily involved. You might not be involved, but you also might say something like this. We want to help you maximize your benefits. And also we don't want to be controlled by insurance companies at some point in the conversation, nor the benefit packages that they offer. Your insurance contract is a contract between you and your employers. Now you want to say this after you've had a chance to meet them, get to know them and your insurance company. And we're not a party to that contract. So, um, and that might come closer to the treatment conversation. The cool part about this is you get to decide when you have these conversations. Um, mm -hmm. So make sure that you've got some basic stuff in place when it comes to that. And, you know, I understand you have several insurance questions and I'll be happy to, more than happy to assist you. But before we go any further, would it be okay if I ask you even more questions? See how I'm laying around the questions? You're like, oh my gosh, Kirk, way too many questions. Mm -hmm. So what prompted you to call us? Why is it important to you finding a new dentist? What's important to you, you know, in finding a new dental home? It's amazing what people will tell you. You know, have you used your insurance in previous offices? Is there anything else you'd like to share with us so that we can make this experience really great? One of my favorite questions asking anyone is this, what else would you like us to know about you? Because they're gonna go, yeah, I ride horses or I ride bikes sometimes. And it's a great way to start a conversation. So. Any thoughts before I keep going? Because I can talk for hours and hours and hours on this stuff. I, I mean, I think like a cool thing, like our brains can't ignore a question. Right. So at like, that's how you are directing these conversations, right? And and I've never once asked someone, is it okay if I ask you a few questions so I can get to better know you? Say right. no. 
Never <laughs> once in 20 years has anyone ever said to me, no. Right. I, I kind of get sometimes like a, huh. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. And, and I know like, oof, I've got you right there because they're like, oh, this is different. Yeah. This, this is nice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Game on. Let's do this. Right. I love it. So be, be different. I Absolutely. mean, that's, that's what this is. Yeah, and it's okay to be different. You know, and then another thing, I've learned this from a lot of offices that have gone completely insurance-free. Now, you can take this to whatever degree you want. And that's what our hope is, is that we're going to give you enough to think about. And when you listen to the rest of the series or you get involved with us, we'll, take, we'll help you sort this, organize it, you know, um, do some role playing with your team. Like it, it's very important to keep layering the learning and put it in place. But another layer that you could put in there is Lisa, I want you to know something special about our office. We are what's called an unrestricted provider, which means we do what's best for every one of our patients every single time. We love our patients and we don't let insurance companies decide what's best for our patients. We know that that's very important for you and we will help you every step of the way. And we're going to be really clear about that up front. But we do the right thing every time for our patients. And that's the one thing you can count on from us here in our office. So in the end, Lisa, yes, you can use your insurance here and it may cover all or a portion or in some cases, none. Remember, so see how I did the E minus R equals C there. I'm not gonna tell you how much it's gonna cover. I mean, it might cover all, it might cover a portion, it might cover nothing um, that you and the doctor discuss. You know, we just don't know that yet. But we're all about relationships. We love our patients now, and we may not accept it as full payment either. Again, this is something you have to clarify with your team members when you're having them discuss this with patients. But you're definitely calling the right place. So let's do this, you know, because as a team member, now, again, if you're a team member, listen to this, you don't know what's on the other line all the time. All, your only goal is to create a relationship, ask great questions, get a good understanding of who they are, why they are, help them see why things are different here. And then you want to transition to the next pivot, which is you want to get them scheduled in your office. And so let's get you scheduled. Now, some other people in dentistry teach that you could dupe the patient, which means you just want to get them in. Don't get into the hole. We accept, we don't accept, just get them in. And then you know how this works. You get all these people in and they get pissed because they thought you accepted insurance, but you didn't really say that and you were so nice on the phone and then you find out they accept, they don't accept insurance or whatever. You don't wanna do that because now you're starting off on the wrong foot. Remember, everything goes back to trust. It goes back to relationships. You wanna let people know, listen, up front, I'm gonna tell you how this all works. And in the end, we're gonna help you every step of the way. Doesn't mean we're gonna accept it as full payment, but I want you to do this. And if you're a dentist and you're struggling with keeping your schedule full, you might consider this. This is a great option too. Just open the filter a little bit. Why not have people come to your office and experience it for free and have no charge? Maybe not for a comprehensive exam, but maybe for a meet and greet because I hope you believe this. They're gonna come here, they're gonna like it, they're gonna see why we might be a little bit more expensive, why we might not participate with certain insurances. So, um, you know, you can get the opportunity to meet these people. So, again, the next pivot is you gotta ask for the appointment. More than 60%, according to the experts, when you look at the data, more than 60% of administrators do not ask for the appointment. You got to ask for the appointment. So let's get you scheduled. Let's get you set up with our doctor. And so that's one of the questions you can ask. Um, or it's not really an ask. You're telling people to come in. Yeah, you're, you're telling them. It's right. shocking how people won't go to this next step. It's crazy. Right? Okay. Let's get yeah. you on the schedule. Let's do it. Yep. Yeah. You know, and the other thing too, I hope you can say this confidently, once you meet our awesome doctor, who you're gonna love, I can walk you through all the details and I'll help you with everything that's possible. I'll be working side by side with you as your advocate to make sure you get the very best dental care and the reimbursement you truly de deserve. Now, the key word there, now I hope you understand, it's advocacy. It's not me versus you. It's not you with an insurance that's lousy for us. I want you to know, like, we're with you every step of the way. 
I am constantly scanning the environment. Jenny, I like how you said that. Like every couple minutes, is this safe? And even if it's unsafe or it might be a little expensive, I really like the person I talk to because I feel like they got my back. Even if this is going to be a little bit more expensive or it's going to require a little bit more for me up front. And Lisa, here's another thing. And again, we're putting it on pretty heavy for you because I want you to be able to get a lot of this stuff. If you don't feel like this is the right place for you, like if you come here, you meet our team, and you don't love it, which I know won't happen. Like, you, I, I think you should have some fun with this. Like, I hope you could say that. There's no charge for the first appointment. I hope you believe that. And we're totally okay with that, you know? So make sure you're equipped with the trust, the belief, all that kind of stuff. So, Jenny, I think that's a good stopping point to kind of end wow. there. But any last thoughts that you have just on insurance or the difficult question that comes with it? Um, I think what kept popping into my mind as we were going through this is really what I, what I want you to be able to do is respond to this really difficult question in a way that understand the patient wants to use their benefits because it's something that they've paid for. Yeah. Don't get upset with the patient because they want to use their insurance. Right. We want to help them maximize it. So look at it as a question to just like, OK, right. I'm going to be your advocate and I'm going to help you get the most out of something that you have paid for. And then past that, what you're doing is you're positively priming your patients for an amazing experience in the office. Yeah. Um, it's a, that's an important thing. I mean, even like write that down, what we're doing, everything that we're doing, talking about Dr. Awesome, talking about how you're going to love it, building trust, telling them you've called the right place. We're positively priming them. We're setting them up for a great experience and, and having them believe like, man, this is going to be, this is going to be different. This is going to be great. Because if we if we lead with no, if we lead with negative, if we're if we're curt and short, we're negatively priming, and we we likely will not get them to come in, or they're going to come in afraid. They're going to come in expecting that it's not going to be a good experience. Yeah. So by eliminating E minus R, by building value, asking good questions, being curious, we're positively priming our patients, and we're starting ahead of the game when they come in to meet us. Yeah, I love what you're saying, love what you're saying. So I hope you enjoyed today. And as like we said, uh, we're gonna have this entire series for you guys. Just go to actdental.com forward slash verbal and you can see the entire series there today. So if you have questions, additional things, we're always here. You can reach me at Kirk at actdental.com or Jenny with an I, J-E-N-N-I at actdental.com. And uh, we'll see you on the next next series. Have a great day, everybody. Have a great day, guys.